Most of us are familiar with the image of marine litter floating at the surface of the sea or washed ashore on the beach. Around 80% of this litter is constituted by plastics coming from our everyday life on land, and an important proportion of these plastics remain invisible to human eyes due to their microscopic size. These tiny plastic particles of less than 5 mm in size are called microplastics. They can be introduced in the marine environment through the degradation of macroplastics, such as plastic bottles, that will take a couple of hundred years to degrade into microplastics. They can also enter the marine environment directly, in the form of microparticles, through the release of plastic pellets, used in the plastics industry, synthetic fibers from washing our clothes, and microbeads, used in many cosmetics. These tiny microplastics are not retained by the sewage treatment plants, due to their small size, and eventually end up in the marine environment. The first scientific data from the past five years indicate that these microplastics are accumulating in the marine environment and can affect ecosystems with more or less long-term impacts on marine habitats and associated fauna. The food chain transfer and bioaccumulation of organic pollutants that stick to these microplastics is also of main concern as well as transport of invasive species carried by these microplastics that could upset the ecological balance in the regions they colonize. To better understand the magnitude of these impacts, scientists from four European countries are grouped in a cross-border consortium, the MICRO project. This project is funded by the European Interreg 2 Seas program and consists of the Belgian Institute for Agricultural and Fisheries Research, ILFO, leading the project, the CFAS Institute in the UK, Deltares in the Netherlands, and two French partners, Ygemer and CNRS. The objectives of the project are divided into three main activities. Scientists realize an inventory of the presence of microplastics in the English Channel, the North Sea and the harbour of Brest first, and then experimentally study the effects of microplastics on several marine key species. Finally, they will seek to analyse the socio-economic impacts of this pollution on important activities in the region, mariculture, tourism and policy, and to propose ways of remediation. The estimation of microplastic contamination in marine waters from our study area is ongoing. It is done with the help of other organizations, for example, in the form of sea cruises that aim to collect and identify floating micro-wastes larger than 300 microns by trawling using a manta net. The state of pollution along the coastline is estimated by sampling sand and sediment. Once the samples are collected, scientists have to conduct several steps to come to an assessment of the amounts and types of plastics. A physical analysis first identifies the type of plastic. Then a chemical analysis determines the nature of the incorporated additives to microplastics by manufacturers and the persistent organic contaminants, or oil types, from the marine environment that may accumulate on the microplastics. Finally, biological analysis allows identifying colonizing species, including bacteria, that can develop on these plastic substrates. First results indicated that microplastics were present and widely distributed in the two seas area, and we showed that their number increased closer to the coast. For example, beaches from the North Finisterre appeared not largely impacted, and microplastics were easily detected and collected only on few beaches during 2013. We know that these were exclusively originated from industrial pallets. However, stormy weather during the winter of 2013-2014 has induced a recent and large deposit of plastic pallets on our beaches. Some bacterial microflora has been detected on the microplastics collected along the Belgian coast, indicating that microplastics can be a vehicle for bacteria across long distances and thus be a way for atypical bacterial colonization or invasion. By their small size and their universal presence, microplastics can be ingested by marine organisms and enter the food chain. Experimental exposure of two types of plastic, fluorescent polystyrene and polyethylene particles, of different sizes, from 2 to 50 microns, were performed. These types of plastics are used in a range of products, from cosmetics to plastic cups. 
Experiments were done in the laboratory with several key species in the ecosystem and for human consumption. Mussels, oysters, shrimp and lobster as well as, as fish larvae. Exposures of microplastics is addressed via the diet. Suspended in seawater as microalgae species for filter feeders such as shellfish or mixed directly into pallets that will feed the fish. In addition, microplastics can absorb persistent organic pollutants already present in the seawater. These pollutants, together with the microplastics, are ingested by marine organisms, which can cause further impact on the health of marine animals when these pollutants are released. We have shown such effects in the digestive tract of the Norway lobster. If this effect occurs in an organism with such an important role in the ecosystem, it can ultimately have an effect higher in the food chain as well. Within the framework of the project, different types of experiments provided first data related to physiological effects of microplastics on marine organisms. Feed intake and food digestion were disrupted due to microplastics. Indeed, microplastics were eaten and taken up by marine organisms in our experiments. In this histological section, we can see dozens of microplastics in the digestive gut of animals exposed during our experiments. Evidence that these microplastics are easily ingested by marine organisms when they are present in their environment. These effects on digestive physiology lead to energy deficiency, which may impact key physiological functions such as reproduction and defense. For example, oysters that were experimentally exposed to polystyrene microbeads produced gametes of poor quality, resulting in poor larval growth rate. Plastic production follows a quasi-exponential increase for several decades. It seems inevitable that the abundance of these plastic particles will increase in the coming years, since we are unable to remove microplastics on a large scale, with further negative effects on the environment. The effects of this increase are directly linked to changes in the environment and include reducing the recreational, aesthetic or heritage value of an area, as well as pose potential risks to public health. Among the solutions proposed, the first and easiest is to change our behavior of using plastic, especially with increasing effort in sorting and recycling. Reducing the problem of microplastics cannot occur without involving the general public, but also the socio-economic sectors, tourism and companies specializing in waste management. In addition, research avenues are being tested on bacteria of marine origin, which have properties that could degrade marine plastic waste. Such bacteria could then be applied in sewage treatment and limit inputs from our domestic uses. The microconsortium scientists therefore have the responsibility to communicate their results and educate the public and policymakers on the microplastic pollution and its effects on marine ecosystems. To do so, they organized a symposium dedicated to the theme Fate and Impact of Microplastics in the Marine Environment in January 2014 at the Institut European Universitaire de la Mer in Brest. This event managed to bring together nearly 90 scientists from 15 different countries and included a day tour dedicated to master students and school kids. The symposium allowed people from different backgrounds as well as school children to discuss the microplastics issue. The micro team will continue to study and involve the general public in this issue because only when we work together can we keep our seas, and thus ourselves, clean and healthy.